Well, good morning. Welcome again to Central Church. Um, like to invite you to go on to our website, centralchurchcambridge.ca, and go and have a look at everything that is going on and everything that I'm going to talk about is on there as well. Um, it's time to spill the beans. We're starting our summer project again, um, the food drive challenge that, that we do every year. It starts officially on, on June the 5th. And this year we are collecting baked beans. So we want to collect 2022 cans, 2022 cans, and I'm sure you know why. Uh, so that's, that's our goal for over the summer. So from the June the 5th, you can start bringing those cans of baked beans, as many as you want. Uh, there are many ways in which you can do that. You can bring the, the cans to church, or you can make an e-transfer to office at cpcmail.ca. Just when you do that, say that it's for fill the uh, fill the beans or spill the, fill the bean pot, uh, project. And then you can also donate online on the website on the Canada Helps part there. Uh, there is a section in which you can do, uh, donations for this. So even if you're not, uh, here in person or even if you're just watching our services and you'd like to be involved in this, we do this for the Cambridge Self-Help Food Bank, um, to help them, uh, when winter comes again to provide the food. And we always check with them what they need. And that's why we are doing the, Spill the beans and fill the bean pot, uh, this year, uh, challenge. So looking forward to that. 2022 is at least where we want to be. And I'm sure we can do even, uh, better than that. The garage sale is coming up Saturday, June the 4th. Just a reminder, if you have anything that you want to, to donate for that, uh, go check online, talk to Denise. Uh, she's the one that'll give you, uh, all the information. And then of course there's VBS. Uh, July 25th to 29th, uh, 9 o'clock to 11.45, JK to grade 7. Um, connect with Kerry, uh, Kerry at cpcmail.ca. She has all the information. It's also on the website. It's also on Instagram. It's also on Facebook. It's all over the place. Uh, but just to get you a little excited about that, uh, here's a little something about VBS. Okay, so they're going to make waves. Time for us to have a time of prayer together. Father God, thank you that we can be together again. Thank you that we can continue walking this road as we, we kind of walk next to Jacob and have a look at his life and be allowed to look at his life uh, and maybe mirror ourselves in that and, and find uh, where we can stand before you and know that you are touching us and changing us and recreating us. Uh, we, we depend so much on you for everything every day. And we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you that we know that in your hands we are safe and we are taken care of. Thank you that you care for this world. Thank you that you care for the people who are in need and who are struggling and who are broken. Thank you that you care for our people who are going through difficult times with their health or any other way that you are with them and that you 
are there to hold their hand and walk with them until they are strong enough to do that on their own again. When we pray these things, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil while we're pain. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. So has anyone ever tried to negotiate a quid pro quo deal with God? A, if you do this, I do that uh, deal, uh, just to find out that the only signature that's on that deal is yours because you misunderstood God or maybe you had a misconception of who God is. Well, that's where we're going to find Jacob today. He's, he's just had this encounter with God where God appeared to him and God made the same promises to him as he made to Abraham and Isaac. And Jacob is so overawed with that that he changes the name of the place from Luz to Bethel. This is the house of God. But Jacob, um, but, but can we just leave Jacob's butt there for a moment? Uh, forgive the pun. We'll get back to Jacob's butt in a, in a, in a second. Because Jacob wasn't the only one who had an encounter with God throughout the Bible. Let, let me show you a few pictures because I want to show you something with that. 
Uh, there was this man called Isaiah, called as a prophet, and he had this encounter with God. And, and, and when he encountered God, he, his reaction was, woe to me. I am doomed because I'm a sinful man living among sinful people, and I have seen God. And then there's this man called Peter in Luke chapter 5, encounters Jesus there on the boat and realizes who he is, falls on his knees, looks at Jesus and says, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And then one more example, book of Revelation, John gets this moment where he gets a peek into heaven, sees God, falls on his knees, worships here in front of the angel. The angel says, don't do this with me. You worship God. So, so here we have Isaiah is undone by God. Peter is overwhelmed. John worships, but Jacob. And now we're back to Jacob's butt. But Jacob, typical Jacob, and in Jacob fashion, Jacob tries to negotiate with God. Read with me as we go to Genesis chapter 28, verses 20 to 22. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then Jacob made this vow. If God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, and if he will provide me with food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God. And this memorial pillar I have set up will become a place for worshiping God, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives to me. Did you hear the language? If you do this, then I will do this. If you protect me, if you provide for me, if you clothe me, if you feed me, then the Lord will be my God. And, and to crown it all, then Jacob says, and in any case, of everything that God gives me, in other words, it belongs to God, I'll give you a, a tenth of that. It's a transaction. It's a contract. <laughs> It's a heresy. And, and I know that's a big word, but just think about it for a second. So, so Jacob, Jacob sees God as this equal with whom he can bargain. Uh, he sees God as so small that God can be bought by a tithe. See, we call that transactional theology. If you do this, then I'll do that. If you fix this, then I'll fix that. But the inherent flaw with transactional theology is this, is that we think that we are on equal terms with God. As if I'm going to the flea market and I meet the seller. The seller has something that I want and I have something that the seller wants. So we barter with each other until we get to a point. And then, then we make a deal. You do this. And I do that. So God, if you help me to pass this test and I do really well, I will stop swearing. If you help me get this job, Lord, then I will be kinder to my wife. If you do this, then I'll do that. Really? Do we really think that God, God who breathed this creation into being, God who says, I held the water of this earth in the hollow of my hand and poured it where it needed to go. Do we really think that God looks at me and says, man, Aubrey's got something that I really, really need. That's what Jacob thought, right? Jacob thought his tithe was so important to God that he could barter with God because God needed that. Well, here's the thing. God does not do deals. There is no quid pro quo with God. No transactional theology. Does it still happen today? Well, TV preacher says, God wants you to have a lot of money. So this is how it works. You bring me your money. I'll pray with you. And then God has no choice. Then God has to give you a lot of money. You're certain of your salvation. Bible teacher, not so certain. Um, do you, do you read your Bible enough? 
questions that, right? Do you pray enough? Do you do enough Bible study? Because if you do this, if you pray enough, if you believe enough, if you obey enough, if you give enough, then you'll be healthy, wealthy, and have salvation. Can you see, can you see the thread? It's subtle, but it's there. So salvation now moves. And salvation is now in the, ha- in the hand of the one who found salvation and not the one who is the savior. Relationship with God is, is relegated to, to a contract, to a transaction with God. Now, now, what's the result of that? People become disillusioned with God. And because they become disillusioned, so many people just turn away and walk away from God. Because why didn't you do this? Why didn't you answer what I asked? Why didn't you give me what I wanted? Why not this? Why not that? Well, you see, my friends, here's the thing. Scripture is full of this. God really likes you. But God is not like you. God is holy. The Greek word for holy is hagios, which means God is different. God is unique. God is set apart. And God really, really likes you. But God is not like you. I have nothing in my hands that I can bargain with God with that sets us on equal terms. And here's the thing. I don't have to bargain with God. So why is all of this important? So let me go back. I think the story of Jacob is written so that so that when we read the story and we see this man and we see what's going on and we're kind of thinking, oh my goodness, Jacob, And we realize how much of Jacob we see in ourselves. But we also see how God does not just give up on Jacob and how God does not turn his back on Jacob, but how God, through decades and decades of work with Jacob, slowly but surely is molding Jacob to become not Jacob deceiver, heel grabber, but Jacob becomes the Israel, the one that God can use, the one who carries the promise and and. And that's exactly what God wants to do for each one of us. But when we think that we can, we can play games with God, the first thing that stumps our spiritual growth is that quid pro quo thing. Because if I think God is puny, I get tired of God quickly and I turn my back and I go my own way. But if I realize who God is, and I realize that God is so unique, so holy, so different from me, that is when I am able to put my life in his hands knowing that he is loving, that he is caring, that he is there for me, that he has the best in mind for me, that he is God. He wants to hear my prayers. He wants to hear my pleas. He wants to give me the best, but he is God. It is not quid pro quo. God loves, God gives, God cares because of who he is and who he has always been. That is why when God looked at this broken world and it's messed up, he sent his son. There was no quid pro quo. There was not, you do this, I'll do that. God sent his son. When Jesus walked in this world and lived in this world, he gave of himself freely and graciously and lovingly and caringly and blessed. When he had to go to that cross, there was no bargaining. There was no transactioning. There was this father Not my will, but your will, Father, be done. I think so many relationships with God fall apart because we do the quid pro quo thing, trying to make deals with God, and we don't have to. 
Because God knows you. God knows who you are. God knows what you care for. God knows what your needs are. And all I need to do is go say, Lord, you know me. You know my life. So I give it all to you. Because, Lord, you know the best. Amen. Pray with me. Father, thank you uh, again that we can walk with Jacob and walk with our own limp. Because I'm so sure that today so many of us can look in the mirror and say, Ouch, I think I've been there. I've done that. But thank you, Lord, that you don't hold that against us and you don't turn away. But like with Jacob, you continue the work with us. And you mold us and make us into who you need us to be. Thank you that we may trust you with our lives for who you are because you are God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out
Well, it was wonderful to spend this day with you again. And uh, as you go and enjoy the spring and summer that's coming on, remember that as you walk every day, God makes the promise that the grace of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ, that the love of God our Father and the amazing indwelling of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen.